Hello, Sax is Arnie's coming at you again from Dr. Darnese's House of Religion, Magic, and Conjo. How y'all doing? Good to see you. Um, thank you all for liking, sharing, subscribing, for commenting, letting me know what you want to see and hear from me. It's always appreciated, and I know that I'm bringing you what you're most interested in. So today, I'm talking to you about these concepts of black magic or white magic. Uh, light magic, or um, what is the other term people say? Baneful magic, and what these mean. So, you know, we get used to using these terms like black magic, um, black ball, black male. It has this negative connotation associated with it, right? And those of us who are black people don't really appreciate that at all because that sets us up to be associated with things that are negative as the case has been historically. Um, and so likewise, when we look at the word black magic, we are um, inundated with the idea that it is evil, it's devil worship that is doing something bad, as opposed to white magic, which is affiliated or associated with, um, you know, Glenda the Good Witch. Um, there's this idea about being a good witch or um, a light worker a light witch, um, someone who only, you know, follows the path of the light. And so by default, then what does that mean for people who practice black magic, people who do things that are um, bad, evil, um, a black witch? I don't even know what that is because it's kind of redundant. Like, oh, if you're doing something that's black, it's bad. If you're a witch, it's bad. Unless you say white in front of it. So, um, yeah, what what is this? Anyway, we understand magic to be uh, another system for understanding our world, our reality, our universe, and ways to um, interact with our environment to our own will. So to, to manipulate the things of our environment to our own advantage. Um, and that is true of you know, whether you call that sort of manipulation or interaction, if you call it magic, if you call it religion, you call it spirituality, you call it science. These are all ways in which people seek um, to understand their universe better, our place in it, and how to get along within the system, the universe, to our own advantage. And it's just that there are different ways for going about that, different systems of knowledge, things that people consider to be good versus bad or good versus evil, really. And, you know, some of you watching may say, well, yeah, I've always thought of black magic as being something really evil, um, like, um, you know, killing somebody or putting boots on somebody, doing voodoo on somebody. And please, if you're thinking that voodoo is something evil, you need to watch my other videos um, about that because voodoo is African religion. And in this part of the world, in the new world where Africans were brought as, as slaves, it was African religion mixed with Catholicism because it is a Catholic um, enslavers, colonizers, um, missionaries who brought those particular slaves into places like um, Haiti and um, even Louisiana. So we get this idea that voodoo is something bad. Well, voodoo is the African, right? Mixed in with the Catholic, which is considered the light. So you have the light and the dark mixed together and it's bad. So then the institution of religion called Catholic is going to say, well, don't do that. Just do the light. And so we buy it. And so we use terms like black magic or white magic or light magic or light worker and the things that are determined to be and labeled black still carry the connotation of being evil. So I'm just asking us to um, really catch ourselves in that kind of terminology, be aware of what you're saying and be aware of what you even mean. If you say black magic, or I don't practice black magic. I only do, I'm only acting as a light worker. Well, what does that mean? Um, so that's just a little bit there about the, the terminology itself. But really where I want to go beyond that even and, and maybe into it a tad bit more. If people say black magic and they mean something like indigenous practices, African uh, 
systems of magic, African religions, if that's black magic, mm, okay, in a way, other than the distinction I just made already. Um, really what I want to say is that magic is putting your hands in your metaphysics, if that makes sense to you. Kind of getting your hands involved, meaning putting your hands in the earth, picking up herbs, um, you know, using fire, using water, using air. Because in, a, in our metaphysical understanding, metaphysical just means going beyond the physical, our metaphysical or occult or esoteric understanding of things, we can get really heady and philosophical, very esoteric as we contemplate, you know, the nature of the universe and the nature of who God is or what God is and what is the nature of a human being and all of that. What is salvation if such a thing exists? Uh, what is my true human potential? All of that can be very heady intellectual kind of stuff. But when you're practicing magic, you're saying, I'm going to do some activity with my hands and get into the earth, as I said, and using the elements, get into fire, uh, water, air, utilize these things to my benefit. So I have a phrase that I use and I say it's you, your magical power lies where you have blood in the soil. Your magical power lies where you have blood in the soil. So again, magic is about helping us turn inward so that we recognize our own power, right? And indigenous systems around the world tie us into our own ancestral lines, right? So for Africans, then you, people of African descent, you have African ancestry. For Europeans, you might have Irish um, ancestry, German ancestry, Scandinavian ancestry, British ancestry. You know, wherever you come from, your blood is in the soil in those places. You get what I mean? Your blood is in the soil, meaning your ancestors have lived and died in certain places in the world. And you are a current day manifestation of those people, of that bloodline. So if you want to practice magic, go into the magic of your people, right? So that's why I say, you know, if you're of African descent, you're going to pr practice black magic, although we're going to say black in a different kind of a way. Black meaning African, not black meaning bad. If you're European, you're going to practice, you know, Celtic traditions, Wicca, um, Norse. You're going to go into those kind of traditions. Why do I say that? Why do I say it's more important for us to, to plug into our own ancestral traditions? Because... We have blood in the soil in certain parts of this world. If you're a Native American person, you got power in the blood in the soil, and, and they and you know that as Native people in the United States. Because through colonization, there have been a lot of loss of land and a lot of pain and anguish over losing touch with the power that's in the soil, right? So I'm an advocate for people finding their roots, practicing the magic of their own family line. Yeah, you can add in, you can convert, you can do some things of other traditions. But I'm an advocate for, and I would challenge you, and I would be interested in your comments, to practice the magic of your people where you have blood in the soil because there's power there. It's powerful to pull the metaphysics from, let's say, the ethers, the esoteric, and to put your hands in it to create something, to manipulate your environment, to, just as the scientists do, just as the religious people do, right? We just call it by different names and we get hung up. We think black magic is bad. We think white magic is good. We get hung up on these terminologies. 
And so I want to say, just get your hands in the soil of your own people. Get your hands in the traditions of your own people. There's power in that for you. If you're interested in a true spiritual path of power, self-awareness, self-improvement, personal development, plug into what plug into your own ancestral line of people who came before you, right? So that's all for this time, and um, I'm going to leave it there. Again, as always, if you want a personal consult with me, you can check the details in the box below there. I've got a link to uh, PayPal, and it makes it very easy for you. You can select if you want a 30-minute session or a 60-minute session. After we have that initial conversation, we can talk about doing something on a more long-term basis if that fits. Um, as I said, I, I stay booked most of the time, stay busy. But, um, you know, if it fits... Um, if you're committed to a spiritual path, then I'm definitely here to help people walk that, to awaken and to walk that. So like, share, comment, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye for now.